Okay, so we're opening on our young boy, Mason, who uh, Gore wanted to have his ears flare out a little more, so he's got some vacuform pieces behind his ears uh, to force his ears out. And then we, we move to old Tonto, who consists of 17 overlapping silicone appliances, pre-punched hair. Uh, he's got two sets of contacts in each eye to sort of force his lower lids down. I wanted to, since you know the eyes are the focus of the character, I wanted that age to be evident in his eyes. So in addition to making his eyes more watery and uh, a little cataract, the double stacking of the contact lenses forces the, forces the lower lid down so that you get that kind of droop that you see in an older person. Okay, so now we have John Reed and Tonto uh, as they appear through most of the movie. Uh, the Tonto character has a series of seven prosthetics on his face, uh, one of which is a nose bridge that gives him more of a Native American look, uh, and then four on his body. They've both been banged up by this train crash that they've suffered, uh, and uh, so has the bird, obviously, on top of Tonto's head. Okay, now we have the Cavendish gang riding up on John and Dan Reed, who have both suffered gunshots. Uh, the Cavendish makeup consists of a silicone prosthetic that changes the uh, end of Bill Fickner's nose, as well as creating this scar on his upper lip. In addition to that, he also had a vacuform plate uh, that went into his mouth that forced, uh, with a, the help of us, of an acrylic hook, forced his lip up into the scar. And, the, you know, of course, the silver tooth, uh, alluding to the fact that the silver is, you know, the root of all the, the evil in these guys. Now, the Cavendish gang uh, consists of, uh, consisted of some fairly elaborate makeups as well. We have Ray, who is sort of the victim of this failed lynching. Uh, and he had two silicone prosthetics on him, one traveling down the side of his face and the other around his neck that allowed us to hide a, a monofilament tab to pull his lower lid down, you know, on the left side of his face. That augmented by uh, a, a bloodshot, you know, trauma lens, uh, uh, contact lens, gave the illusion that uh, he survived some pretty nasty stuff. And the rest of the Cavendish gang also has, um, you know, there's some characters that have some pretty specific makeups on. Jesus, uh, you see there in the background, has a scar on the top of his head. Skinny has, uh, you know, blisters all over his mouth and his nose. Um, now we come back to Cavendish eating, you know, Dan Reed's uh, heart. Uh, we built an elaborate rig for this, a half-body rig, um, and had a puppeteer underneath, you know, the the earth in, you know, in... Canyon de Chez, puppeteering, you know, Badge's body, uh, Dan Reed's body. Um, we built a pumping heart. Um, some of this obviously was cut out, but, you know, uh, some of it remains, you know, alluded to in, you know, John Reed's reflection in John Reed's eye. Um, and then there was also a, a body for each of those guys, Dan and John Reed, uh, that were used later that didn't make it into this clip, but, you know, we had to be... We had to be sparing with what we wanted to show. There's so much makeup in this movie that uh, we can only show 10 minutes of it. So now we have John Reed waking up on top of the spirit platform after he has been res rescued by Tonto. Uh, this is the makeup done by Mike Smith's and Mike Key. Um, you know, he's got war paint on him. Uh, he's got, uh, you know, horse excrement in his hair. Uh, you know, and, and basically the, the ravages of, you know, the sun and the wind, uh, you know, to uh, complete this look. And, and this continues through a campfire scene um, and gradually, gradually gets washed off uh, before he becomes the Lone Ranger. This is sort of his look right before he becomes the Lone Ranger. Okay, here's Hell on Wheels. I'm going to talk as fast as possible. We had so many makeups in this sequence, uh, none of which were scripted. Uh, this was just a very talented uh, crew that I was fortunate enough to work with coming up with some interesting looks that we'd always wanted to see. Dogface boy here who consists of lace pieces over his face. That was the geek who has keloided scars over his entire body. That's me wearing the goat skeleton on my back. Uh, makeup applied by Bill Corso. And of course, we, uh, John and, or the Lone Ranger and Tonto. There's a half man, half woman. There's our preacher who's got a splint on his leg that yeah, I think you see in a later scene. There you go. Um, then we have a, a body hanging in the background that we made. 
And that brings us into Red's, the interior of Red's, uh, you know, saloon. And this is populated by, you know, a multitude of prostitutes that had, you know, period correct uh, makeup on them. You've got the dancers up on the stage that, that had interesting makeups on them. Uh, and then you eventually make it all the way up to, I mean, this, this sequence, this interior sequence, this was shot very early on, whereas the exterior was shot very, very much after that. You know, there was a buffalo headed guy back there in the background. I don't know if you saw that, uh, but you know, we built that as well. Okay. And this brings us to the flashback sequence, um, where you see, uh, you see Cavendish and Cole as they appeared when they first discovered the silver, you know, in Tonto's village. Um, there was some talk about the young Cavendish not having the scar on his face. Uh, and we would assume that he got the scar later on, you know, in a battle. Uh, but in order to, you know, for the continuity of the characters, we decided to give him the scar and the gold and the silver tooth. Um, this is where they're discovering the, the silver. They're both very sort of weather-worn. Um, we did layers of stipple and latex and, you know, peeled it up so that they'd have the look of being, you know, sort of left in that desert that you saw them in earlier. Uh, and then, you know, we have young Tonto and his entire village um, that had to be treated, you know, with as much care as every other character. Okay, so now we, we come back to Cavendish and his gang, as well as the Chinese railroad workers. Um, in this movie, there's, you know, the stuff that you're not going to see is, is, you know, all the cavalry, you know, the Comanche village. I mean, you know, like I said, we could only show 10 minutes in this, in this academy reel. So I tried to pick the most interesting 10 minutes. And this is, uh, you know, this is skinny shaving Butch Cavendish. You know, the uh, Chinese railroad workers are having a problem with digging in the uh, mine. They think it's cursed. There's Ray, the, the gentleman I mentioned earlier, the character I mentioned earlier, with the pull on his lower lid. And you can see it there, you know, it goes through his mustache, so he's missing some hair. Um, and then all of the Cavendish gang behind him, all wearing a special makeup. There were 86 speaking parts in this film, all with special makeup. You know, so now we have uh, Tonto and... Uh, John Reed coming out of the water. This is after the Indian massacre. Uh, I addressed uh, Tonto's makeup in such a way that it looks like it's running off because most, through most of the movie, the idea is that he's got this cracked earth on his face, but obviously coming out of the water, that would have sort of reactivated and, you know, reliquified and started running. So this makeup is, is a, a, you know, a hint of you know, makeup running down his face and, and minimal prosthetics. And then we cut to the old age version in a, in a flash forward sequence. Uh, and this is one of my favorite shots of the age makeup. Um, just because I think that the performance uh, that Johnny is giving in this is, is, is priceless. You know, it's really moving. Um, and, you know, uh, me, uh, myself, uh, Mike Smithson and Kenny Niederbottomer applied uh, applied this makeup on a daily basis. It shot about five times uh, with, you know, multiple days of insert shots. Um, and then we come to our band. Uh, there are two stages of these guys. This is the, the clean, fresh version. Everybody, everybody in this crowd is wearing something, whether it's facial hair, dirt makeups. Uh, you know, it, 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 there's not a single person in the hundreds and hundreds of background that we had that is not wearing some kind of makeup. Um, you know, here we have Cole as he appears through most of the movie. Uh, you know, we have Haberman who is sort of in charge of the railroad, uh, all wearing facial hair prosthetics. Uh, and then, like I said, the townspeople all treated with care by a fantastic crew that, uh, we picked up in New Mexico. And now we have uh, Red, Red Harrington, who's played by Helena Bonham Carter, uh, and then Fuller, who's who's uh, uh, examining her leg there. He's got, you know, he's got a wig, he's got facial hair pieces. Red, you know, was made up by Robin Beauchene, uh and she did a fantastic job. And then here's Tonto as he appears through most of the movie again in his, you know, his prosthetic mud makeup. 
Rance Howard. Here, Always fun to work with Rance uh, as an engineer, you know, completely covered in, in soot and dust. And this is the last shot. You know, we have the beaten version of Cavendish and Fuller. Uh, interesting on, on Fuller is he's got a cracked tooth that was a dental prosthetic that we added at the last minute. And that's the Lone Ranger.